So I'm going to show you a few symptoms that find expression in a situation of bewitchment. First of all, we have what is called cyclical bondages. Something will come and go, resurface after three years. It will go, it will resurface after nine years. It, it, it's cyclical. You would think it has gone, but it has a way of coming back. Cyclical affliction. If you are in this congregation and you have cyclical afflictions, cyclical situations, things that go and come and go and come. Let me see your hand up. Cyclical. It's a sign of bewitchment. And we're going to um, address these things one after the other. Break the yoke. Another symptom is what we call the near miracle syndrome. You make a lot of effort. Things look as though they are opening up. And when you are getting closer, everything just fizzles out. It's an indication of the fact that you are, you are bewitched. There is somebody that is physically present, casting a spell against your destiny. That's what it means. Anybody in this room that's ever experienced near miracle syndrome before, can I see you? You get close to it as if something big is about to come. Sometimes you even pick it in the spirit that your time has come, your season has come. And as you are going close, it fizzles out and it's as if there was no nothing moved at all. Sign up, be with me. Some of the authorities I read, Christian teachers and preachers that are gifted and endowed by wisdom to teach on these subjects. Hallelujah. Because I'm a scholar. I'm a scholar. I have masters of different fields. All right? that I submit to in terms of knowledge. When we talk about deliverance, demonology, all of these subjects, the authority we subscribe to, I mean preachers in my own block, is Derek Prince. He's most clinical on this subject. You will know that God gave him a ministry along this line. All right, so there's a lot of research in what I'm doing apart from my own personal practice of ministry. Are you with me? And this is what Derek Prince said. He said, witchcraft is more effective in the lives of those that are not aware they are bewitched. Have you ever heard someone claiming to be a faith student says, no, I, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. Those are the greatest victims of witchcraft. I remember those days I was in the university here and you know we were intercessors and god was showing us mercy with little little insights little little revelations so a friend of mine this friend of mine are you there he used to faint on campus he used to faint he would just be talking now and then he would just fall down so one of those times he fainted on my floor so they brought him to my room and put him on my bed that's it pastor this man fainted. Now, now they do this kind of work. And they left him on my bed. And I cried. He came back to life. When he came back to life, I told him the experience of his coming back to life. That when he was coming back to life, I was hearing a woman screaming at him. This woman, obviously, is a relative of his that wants him to continue in this state. The guy, when he recovered, and it was my prayer and God's mercy. That was the mixture that brought him back from wherever he was. Are you with me? And now I was telling him the experience I had when he was resurrected. That um, he woke up and said, no, no, I don't believe it. I'm, I'm a man of faith. I walk by faith. I don't walk by sight. God has brought deliverance unto me. Hallelujah. Okay. The day I wrote my last exam, the guy now came and said, ah, his younger sister told him the same thing I told him. That he's ready for the prayer. And I said, me, I'm not ready. When I was ready, I told you, you say you don't, you don't believe in it. I have finished school. The, this territory, I've handed it over. I won't labor here again. Do you know that when I went for your service, the guy fainted and he died. Nobody could bring him back. Oh, you can sit there and say, oh. You know, I'm a man of faith, you know. The Bible says if any man being Christ is a new creation, 
old things have passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The Bible says, Simon the sorcerer, he bewitches it. <laughs> he bewitches it. How many of you were there during the last elections? You will know that the church was bewitched. I speak to men that have understanding. So go and keep that your scripture in your pocket. That one you normally quote that there is no enchantment again. Because we are not aware the situation we are under is not normal. Number three, we have unexplained sickness. Then suddenly some strange pains will just come on your body. Then you go around tests, you do x-rays, and the radiologist will say you are okay. Unexplained afflictions unexplained there are several people that are sick in the night but well in the morning and there is no medical condition that only prevails at night a pastor was telling me about a situation and the situation was a pastor in london but he notices that a certain lady is sick in the night but she's well at the time then the unction came upon him. He began to minister to that lady and a vicious spirit came out. How many of you felt yesterday that something left you? If you felt it? Unexplainable. Unexplainable. The doctors cannot explain it. The radiologists cannot explain it. There is no evidence to prove that there is anything like that at work. Meanwhile, the person is dying. This kind of thing is suggestive of the fact that there is a physical priest doing something spiritual to bring you injury. The city reckoned with Simon as the great power of God. Number four, you hear voices, voices that give you instructions, voices, Satan trying to control your soul, voices that threaten you, try to sell fear into your heart that if you don't do this, a terrible thing will happen. And many times we are more afraid of the devil than we are afraid of God. How many of you hear voices here? Giving you instructions. Tonight is your night of deliverance. Finally, we have cases of noticeable hindrance. And this hindrance I'm talking about can affect one aspect of your life or every aspect. In the case where it affects one aspect, you can be fulfilled in your career. You can do business. You can prosper. It doesn't hinder you from making money. But your marital life is shut down. In some cases, it is a, your calling. You can do everything. You can marry. But you are incapable. You know you have a call. But you are, you are incapable of bringing yourself to submit yourself at the altar. That I want to serve the will of God. And anytime you rise up and say, all right, I want to begin to do something to serve God. The attacks you get. Can anybody feel what I'm talking about? Strange attacks. If you stay without praying, your life is good. Then you just wake up one time and say, for 21 nights, I'm going to hit the prayer road. And from the seventh night, attacks, ninth, at, oh, things will appear to, some things will come in your door and say, Kaise salura na kabala. Isko fe laminaito kusketaide. 
You know what the Lord told me? He told me, if, if you people press and press in prayer until April, in April, there will be massive breakthroughs. So, all these things I'm doing, all these things I'm doing is to ensure that this year, you will come out of every limitation. Every bondage. Noticeable hindrances. And people from all over the world have sought audience with all on social media to explain their own unique expression of bondage. And I'm talking about white and black alike. And the things I speak of are not just peculiar to black people. But we've had all kinds of calls, dumb deliverance online. And it's obvious that the knowledge of how God breaks bondages is very scarce. But tonight, the Lord will help us. So when you stand on your feet tonight, you are standing not just on your behalf. You are standing on the behalf of yourself, of your family, of your entire kindred. Oh my. I have asked the Lord for mighty angels that excel in battle. So that even though the root of the things we contend with are such things that are buried, they will be uprooted tonight. Oh, you feel that the door of your marital life has been closed and the keys have been thrown into river venue. It will be recovered. Satan is not in control. God is in control.